today I've got for you what I believe is the best squat variation for you as a combat athlete. And it is the front squat. Now I'm not telling you that you shouldn't back squat or shouldn't do other squat variations, but in my experience, you can get just as good results using the front squat without some of the drawbacks of using the back squat. Now, the reason I prefer the front squat over the back squat are a couple of things. The first one is it's front loaded, it engages more of the upper back, develops that strength there. But secondly, typically as a combat athlete, I know so many combat athletes that just tend to have lower back issues. And whether that's just from a lot of rolling on the mats or whatever, or just postures during combat sports, these things tend to wear over time in the lower back. The back squat is much harder on the lower back, not just because of where the bar sits, but because of the absolute loads compared to the front squat. Now, just because the front squat is loaded lighter does not mean you're not gonna develop good leg strength doing it. Now, the problem when people use the front squat is they try use grips that they're not mobile enough for, or they try squat like a powerlifting back squat and end up losing the bar forward. So I'm gonna take you through all the technical points for the front squat so you can do it properly and get the most out of it. If you like it, I would recommend potentially replacing the back squat in your training with the front squat. It doesn't mean I don't program the back squat, but for most people, the front squat tends to feel better, especially on the knees and the lower back. So the first thing is the grip. Now, typically we're looking at a clean grip. I'll show you now on the bar. So typically we're looking at a clean grip with our hand under the bar getting into this position. Now, the problem is, most athletes struggle to find this front rack position. You need extreme wrist mobility, you need long triceps to be able to get there, and you need shoulder mobility to be able to hold that bar position and keep your elbows high. If you can do that, do it. It is the most secure grip you can use when front squatting, and it feels the tightest. If you cannot do that, you have a couple of options. The first one is using a cross grip, and I'm gonna show you that now. So the cross grip allows you to rest the bar on your shoulders without having to find that hard mobility position. And you can still squat like that by keeping the elbows up and it still sits on the shoulders. Your second option is using straps. You can also use towels, but straps tend to work best. And instead of having to have your wrist under the bar, you can hold the straps and I'll show you how. Doing this removes any need to have the wrist mobility to rack the bar. So you can use straps as well. So those are your three options. Play around with them, see which one feels best for you. Because you're not a weightlifter or a competitive weightlifter, you don't need to be in that front rack position. You don't need to develop the mobility to be there either. So if you don't have it, go with one of these other options. So now I'm gonna go into the squat itself. Now the worst thing you can do is try and perform a powerlifting style low bar back squat. As soon as you sit your hips back, and lean over, you lose the bar off your shoulders and you're done. The point of the front squat is to be as upright as possible, maintaining a big chest and high elbows. And to do that, you wanna slightly break at the hips first, and then the knees come forward. So you're breaking at the hips first, and then the knees come forward to maintain that big chest and upright torso. You'll see some footage of me front squatting over some of this at the moment. So let's talk equipment for just a second as well. You'll see that I'm wearing some knee sleeves and some weightlifting shoes here. Now, these are not necessary as a combat athlete to train, but they can be helpful. So when we're talking knee sleeves, these are very thin hook grip knee sleeves. They're like almost like compression socks for your knees. They're not thick neoprene five millimeter or seven millimeter sleeves that you might typically find for strength athletes. I don't find them very helpful for myself. I find they cause more problems than they uh, help. So I use these. You don't have to, if you uh, beat up, have sore knees, a lot of mileage on them, then this could be a good option. But you also got to modify the way you front squat. You'll see in some of the videos that I'm posting here, I don't bounce out of the hole on these videos. Typically, I normally would. But if you've got a lot of mileage on your knees, you're an older athlete, etc., you want to have a slight pause at the bottom so you're not bouncing. That will help your knees when squatting. Now, I've also got these weightlifting shoes. Obviously, weightlifting shoes, they have an elevated heel. They will help you get into the bottom position to get into a deep squat. You don't typically want to squat in normal trainers or running shoes. They have unstable soles, so they move around a lot and they don't have an elevated heel, making it a little harder to get to depth. So if you don't have any shoes, squat bare feet. If you're going to do squats and really invest in your strength conditioning, I would advise buying some sort of weightlifting shoes with an elevated heel. You can get small elevated heels that go in your normal shoes. I think they're called VersaLifts. 
Those are a good option too, or you can elevate your heels on plates on the floor. That is the last resort in terms of elevating your heels. So those are good options. If you check out the description, I've got links to all this stuff so you can find it easily. So let's talk programming for the front squat. Now typically it's going to depend on your phase of training, what you're trying to achieve out of the front squat. Normally with the front squat, I won't go as high rep as I will with the back squat, but even with combat athletes, you're not really gonna do high rep squats anyway. It's just too taxing and it's gonna negatively affect your technical training. So typically we're looking at a maximum of around six reps, sometimes eight depending on the cycle. But six reps maximum, we're looking at anywhere from two to four sets and anywhere from one to six reps. Now, how you do that is going to depend, again, where you are in your training, how far you are from the fight, et cetera. You don't wanna to go to failure on the front squat. You want to stay two, three reps shy of failure. So the sets are still hard, but you're not getting stuck in the bottom. That's an important point to save you uh, from having to try and recover from something that is too intense. Regarding your breathing when doing the front squat, it's important to not breathe into your chest. You don't want to elevate your shoulders like you're taking a big breath up here. Because as soon as you do that and your breath comes out while you squat, your shoulders come down and that's when you start to lose the elbow position, you start to lose the bar of your shoulders. You want to brace around the middle like it's a cylinder that expands and you want to be tight here and every breath comes through the midsection. See how my, my shoulders didn't elevate. My shoulders stay exactly the same, but I breathe through here. And that's what you need to do when you're front squatting to maintain that big chest position and a tall upper back. If this was helpful for you, please like, subscribe, share it. If I missed anything, you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. I can help you and answer them there, and I can make further videos on any topics you need help with.